Uh, good afternoon, everyone, in Science and Values. Uh, I'm a little bit delayed in posting this third lecture video for this week. Uh, it's not going to be very long. I just have a little bit left that I want to cover from the Faya Avund reading. Uh, it was the um, this. It's section four, where it's section four is titled "Democratic Judgment Overrules Truth and Expert Opinion." Um, there's just a little bit more to say about um, Faya Avund's argument. Um, and it's kind of a more general topic that I'm going to frame it in terms of rather than focusing on necessarily all the specifics of what Faya Abend has said. Uh, and in particular, it's, it, it's about the relationship between democracy and science and whether or not we can find a way to think about these two adequately going together. Uh, because at least uh, on the surface, there might be a surface level tension between at least the concepts of science and democracy. Doesn't mean that once we dig in a little bit, we can't necessarily find a way to kind of fit the two together, but at least on the surface, we might suggest that there is a tension between the two. And the tension is simply this that democracy uh, as a concept relies upon uh, mass participation of citizens, um, that everyone is included in a democracy. The demos, so to speak, which is the, the people um, that's in the, the Greek uh, of the word democracy. And so the people the concept of the people, or we might say majority opinion, is also really important as it relates to living in a democracy. We give a lot of weight to what the people think. We give a lot of weight to what the majority thinks. And so democracy is premised upon a notion of respecting the opinion of everyone. Um, in particular, um, also when it comes to actually making decisions, we respect the opinion of the majority. Now, science, on the other hand, we might think has a slightly different um, way of, of, of making decisions. It doesn't rely upon a majority. Science relies upon experts. Um, if you're a scientist, you, you, know, you get your degree in science, get your PhD potentially. Not every scientist has a PhD, but um, a lot do. And, and you become an expert in your field. And you do research, and you, you publish papers, and, um, and you are considered an expert as a scientist. And so there's a kind of authority that goes along with, with science, that decisions... Um, what counts as knowledge in science, what gets to count as knowledge, um, is deemed to be knowledge by those who are considered, quote-unquote, scientists. And so scientist carries with it a kind of expertise and authority that is somewhat in tension with the other kinds of values that we just described with democracy. So on the one hand, we've got science, expertise, and authority. But on the other hand, we have democracy, mass participation, majority opinion, um, things like that. And it, so it doesn't, it's not clear initially how something like science can exist within a democracy. How an institution that relies upon expert opinion can coexist within a democratic system. And of course, all of you might just kind of be nodding your heads and saying, yeah, we see the problems playing out in front of us in real time with the major with maybe not the majority, but uh, large percentages of the American population who are distrustful of scientists. And so we simply see the process or the, um, yeah, we see the process 
playing out in front of us when we try to have experts tell citizens what they should and shouldn't believe, what they should and shouldn't do. And that's the tension that's playing out in front of us. And the question is, how do we deal with that? Um, because we value democracy. Uh, we also value uh, scientific expertise. We value both. And so how do we have the, how do the two coexist? Now, Feyerabend, and this, this is kind of um, a conclusion and somewhat to his argument, and I don't think you'd be surprised, is that Feyerabend is very skeptical of science as a, he's very skeptic, skeptical of the notion of expertise in science. Um, given what he's already said, that science is just a tradition, like any other tradition. Science is just one other way amongst many of making sense of the world. Uh, you can probably guess that he's not going to give a lot of credence to the idea that science, um, that the notion of scientific expertise, that scientists simply know better than everyone else, he's going to be very skeptical of that notion. So the question is, though, what are we supposed to do about this? What is Faya Abin suggesting? Well, Faya Abin clearly wants to place the priority on democracy. He is of the opinion that the democratic values are more important than any notion of scientific expertise. And so he opens section four by talking about some of these democratic values. At the bottom of 86, he writes... Everyone must be able to pursue what he thinks is the truth or the correct procedure for finding the truth. And secondly, because the only way of arriving at a useful judgment of what is supposed to be the truth or the correct procedure is to become acquainted with the widest possible range of alternatives. So, and then he refers to, to John Stuart Mill's On Liberty essay there which is a very well-known text in political philosophy. And all he's saying is uh, we can't just dismiss opinions we disagree with or things we don't like as stupid and harmful because the only way to arrive at the truth is when the truth has survived the onslaught of all of the competing opinions that can compete with it. It's often referred to as like a marketplace of ideas kind of thing that what is considered the truth is that which is able to compete with and withstand all the alternatives. When the widest possible um, engagement is made available in a democracy for everyone, then we can be sure that whatever truth we arrive at is the best, uh, is the best one. It seems like a, I, I, at least something we should strive for. As many opinions as possible, because we're dealing with as many opinions as possible, it increases the likelihood that whatever thing, whatever we arrive at will be what we could call the truth. And it also means, what this also means is that a trade-off of living in a democracy is that sometimes we will end up with something that is the truth that we don't like. A trade-off of living in a democracy is, and a trade-off of living in a democracy and having something like majority opinion is that we will end up with decisions that we disagree with. This happens all the time. The majority, the nature of majority opinion is that it will end up reflecting the will of some people and not of others. But the argument usually for democracy is that that kind of thing is worth accepting about a democracy because the alternatives are much worse. So you accept that trade-off, that you will live in a country, live in a society in which you may disagree with a lot of the opinions that are made. So, and what I'm referring to here are, for example, he gives the example of, let's say, for example, that in, well, again, I don't know the specifics. I didn't grow up in South Carolina, but there's certainly a uh, you know, I can imagine that in some states, especially in the South, 
the state legislature might make it mandatory, for example, that creationism be taught in public schools because, um, and that it be taught alongside science as an quote-unquote alternative to something like evolution. And this is simply the reflection of a democratic majority that has been elected. If the majority of people in Congress who are were elected by a majority of people living in the state of South Carolina um, decide that creationism needs to be taught in schools, then that is simply democracy at work. We can't, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, I mean, we can complain or we can, uh, you know, protest maybe. But if it's been passed by a majority, then we have to live with it and accept it because it's been a democratic process. And so that is, that's just what it means to live in a democracy. And Faya Aben wants to say that that kind of thing is inconsistent with a scientist simply telling you what the truth is because they have a degree and they are an expert in science. That the kind of processes and procedures we have in place to arrive at decisions as it relates to governmental policies are fundamentally inconsistent with a scientist simply saying, I'm an expert, I know better. And so Faya Aben doesn't have a lot of um, faith in the idea that, uh, that scientists can, can simply proclaim something to be the truth and that everyone will listen. Because there is a democratic impulse to resist expert authority. That's just a fact. The nature of our democratic system will, by its very nature, resist when someone simply says, I know better, I'm an expert. It's just the truth. I think. I think that's... But, so what's the solution? Well, Faya Aben wants to say that citizens need to be more involved in uh, the decision-making procedures of science. And he, he explicitly does say this, um, and I'm referring to the notes here. Um, I, I write, so if you looking, I'm, I'm reading from the last page of notes here. I, I write, Faya Abend is proposing an active role in the decision-making procedures of how scientific knowledge is applied. To be a mature citizen in the sense Faya Abend is, is considering mean ones must one must learn from being involved in decision-making processes. So, uh, again, he, and I want to, when I were, so, Faya Abend is, is advocating for a more, ad, he's, he's advocating for a more active role of the citizen. So he's, Faya Abend has a, a pretty robust conception of what a democratic citizen would be doing. A, a democratic citizen is someone who is actively engaged um, so in order for what Faya Abend is proposing to work, then the citizen has a lot of responsibility. So he's not just kind of saying every, it's just going to be a free-for-all. The citizen needs to be able to, it's more idealistic, I think, but the citizen in a democracy has to conceive themselves, conceive of themselves as an active participant in the decision-making process, not just as somebody who shows up to a to vote every two or four years. That's not the conception of a citizen that Faya Abend is concerned with. Because when he writes on page 87, um, a democracy is an assembly of mature people, um, you know, we have to learn how to be good citizens. We need to be taught how to be good citizens. Um, but if in this imagined democratic system that Faya Abend is proposing, we have citizens, who conceive of their roles in a more active as opposed to passive sense. The passive sense would simply be um, showing up to vote every four years. The active sense would be a, the conception of yourself as you live in a society, you live in a country, um, and you are affected by the decisions that are made, and therefore you want to have a say in those decisions beyond just voting. You want to have a more active role than just voting. And so the question is, what is Faya Abend proposing? And I often, when I get to this part of the reading in Faya Abend, I don't really, 
know what he's proposing. Um, I don't know exactly what he's proposing, but I think we have some analogs um, in our own uh, system now that that maybe can speak to what Faya Abend has in mind. So, on the one hand, we've got um, we've got something like citizen science, where um, and this this has a this gets to the I think more of like the educative or the educational role of the scientist. Well, the scientist is not simply the expert. The, the scientist is also the teacher, the, the educator. The scientist is concerned with making citizens or helping citizens understand how science is done. And so maybe the concept, it, it, for this to work, for what Faya Abend is proposing to work, the scientist has to be conceived of not as an expert, but as an educator, that fundamentally the scientist's role in society is to help the public understand what they know, not simply to tell them, but to help them understand. And if we conceive of the scientist in that way, then the scientist is more democratic. And so maybe the solution here is just to conceive of the scientist in a different role not as an expert, but as an educator. But again, uh, I think, you know, Faya Abin leaves you wanting a little bit with the details of, of what he's proposing about having citizens involved. But there are things like citizen science. Citizen science. You can Google that term, you'll find it. And, and often when I teach this class, students are able to give me examples of, of scientists doing outreach in the, in the community. Um, you may be aware of it even happening here in Clemson. You yourselves may have, you know, worked in summer science camps for kids. I think those are examples of it. It's involving citizens more in the process. Um, and so I think that could be what Faya Abend is getting at. Um, you might think I'm helping Faya Abend out a little bit too much, that that's a little bit more optimistic than what Faya Abend is proposing. But I do think we have, you know, ideas of what this could look like is that if we conceive of science as a process in which two parties are involved together, it's not expert and ignorant citizen, it's, I don't know, scientist and citizen working together to help each other understand what each other needs. I don't, as the citizen, I don't simply need the scientist to tell me what the truth is. I need the scientist to help me understand how they arrived at the truth. And that is a much more democratic procedure. Now, let me just kind of end this by saying that uh, what we're reading next week, I think a, a more radical way of thinking about citizen science is, is um, biohacking. Uh, and that's why I'm, I've added, I've never taught this part of the course before, but next week's readings deal with biohacking. And I think it's a natural transition from the end of the Faya Abend reading to the beginning of biohacking. And biohacking doesn't necessarily mean one specific thing, but biohacking has the same kind of impulse that science should be more democratic. And it's simply, it's not citizens, you know, listening, or it's not, it's not scientists going, or, sorry, it's not democratic in the sense that I just described. It's not democratic in the sense that uh, citizens are going to scientists to learn about science. It's actually, in this case, it's the average Joe deciding they want to be a scientist, rejecting the notion that you need formal training and expertise and degrees to be considered a scientist. And so you'll notice the, 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 um, the, the reading for next week is, is dealing with something called DIY bio, um, which is a movement that started, um, and, and you'll, you'll pick that up in, in the reading. It's the idea that um, the, the title of the article is kind of funny. It's tweaking your genes in your garage. So this is a much more radical idea, but I think it speaks to an impulse that's alive in the kind of age that we live in. It speaks to a democratic impulse regarding all sorts of things, that there is a rejection of expertise um, in a problematic way, but also potentially in a good way. That the power, that, that, that there's something about, you know, and I'm going to say more about this next week, so I don't want to go too far down this road. But there's something about that, that something like corporations and institutions and universities holding and holding like 
the license to all this knowledge. The question is, who owns scientific knowledge, right? Does, do universities, do corporations own it? Or should it be something that's more widely available? And then if somebody says, look, I want to, you know, engage in, you know, uh, biology or genetics in my garage and, and mess with my own DNA if I want to, well, who's going to stop me, right? So that's a more radical democratic sense. But, but I think if you think in the, in the kind of age that we're living in, with something like the access to information that has been brought, that has been kind of um, made available by something like the internet and things like that, then, then it's not surprising to find citizens engaging in this. So anyways, by way of transition, I want you to think about the end of the Faya Aben reading and moving into next week, thinking about, um, you know, uh, citizens taking it upon themselves to do science. That's actually all I have uh, for this for this week, and um, I will see you all soon.